Well, sports that were once strictly amateur are now being taken to another level through cutting-edge technology and slick television coverage. Sailing is a classic of these. And now, once amateur sailors are now highly paid professionals, the teams in Sail GP now compete for big commercial deals from global companies and tech giants. Nina Curtis, who won a silver medal for sailing at the 2012 Olympics, then joined Sail GP as a strategist. Steph Nash caught up with her on the sidelines of an Oracle event earlier this week. Nina, you're an Olympian. You've been with Sail GP since season two. What attracted you to this event? I mean, there's like what's not to love. These boats are absolutely extraordinary. We've got a humongous aeroplane wing driving us through the water. We're foiling. The racing is so close. It's, um, I think, the pinnacle of sailing at the moment, and it's been an absolute privilege to be a part of it. And so, you know, I, I've read that, you know, when you were training for the Olympics that you found it a little bit more challenging financially to kind of support yourself. You know, is that kind of a draw card coming over to something like this? It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's actually really hard. Um, we're just kind of changing the way and getting athletes, female athlete representation in this paid level. And, um, yeah, always Olympic is an amateur um, avenue of the sport and it's been a really nice shift to it's nice to see these opportunities open up for female athletes and um, yeah it's been a really exciting change. Um, there is amazing technology behind Sail GP and, and other sports like this so you know how does that help you with your training you were explaining about you know not just the type of boat but also like a simulator so tell us about that. Yeah, Sail GP is really unique in the sense that the boats are completely equal and all the data that's pulled from those boats are shared. So you can pull any team's data and really learn and, and, and find some good opportunities to learn. Um, and so it's really, I think, changed the nature of the sport and made it closer, and especially for new and emerging teams. And, um, yeah, it's really made the sport kind of cutting edge in that sense. And tell me about the simulator as well and how realistic that is, you know, to train. Yeah, the simulator is a really good training tool. These boats are packed away and spent so much time on shipping containers moving from event to the event as we move around the world uh, with the competition. So training days are really limited. So opportunities like jumping on the simulator can help you kind of nut out a few situations that you might need to work on and kind of build that team, team um, cohesion in decision making and so forth. And so as you've said, you know, sailing did start out as, as you know, more of an amateur sport and it's now catapulted into such a, you know, professional sport. What's that journey been like for you? Yeah, it's been a slow journey. As a female athlete, you know, we're really just kind of seeing the change now in the sport where these opportunities are opening up. We're trying to close that skills gap that's kind of developed over the last 20 years, uh, especially in these avenues of the sport. So I think it's really important that, you know, there's female representation on board and that we've got that opportunity to, to really close that skills gap. And what about your own brand as an athlete? You know, have you had to work on attracting sponsors yourself? Um, not, not previously. You're always kind of tied in with the team uh, and that's where you kind of get the team sponsorship and so forth. But, you know, there's projects that are available um, in, in sailing in that sense, but yeah, generally you're under the, the team sponsorship. And so do you work on that as well as part of the team to attract sponsors to your team? Uh, always. I think uh, the, the bigger players in the sport, some of the uh, other members have definitely had the ability to, to pull in that sponsorship. Um, so I know that you've got, you know, the America's Cup later this year. So, you know, how do you compare the commercial model of Sail GP? What's that like compared to other sort of, you know, races like the America's Cup? Sail GP is a real business model in that sense that, um, you know, there's uh, lots of sponsorship coming in. The teams are being bought and, um, you know, we're hopefully with Australia, we're looking to have our team bought. And lastly, I read that you are juggling, you know, your amazing career with your own businesses as well. So tell me about those and how you manage to achieve so much. Yeah, my husband and I, we run a small health and fitness business in the northern beaches of Sydney in Avalon uh, called No Nonsense. And we also 
um, make a magnesium, um, a topical magnesium as well. So that we've just, I've got an eight month year old, eight month old girl um, and it's been a real juggle. I'm so proud to be back in the sport as a mother. I think that, that the visibility of that, our whole team are dads, um, all of the athletes. And so it's really, it was really important to me that I had the space to have a family of my own and return to the sport and have that uh, public because I think it's really the future of women's sport. One extra question. I know someone today asked about, you know, getting more eyeballs on the sport of sailing. What's your view on that? What do you think can help, you know, attract that sort of revenue? Yes, yeah, so LGP is doing such a good job in terms of the technology of making sailing a little bit more understandable. Uh, and in that sense, you can get a little bit more um, interested in the sport as a whole. But, you know, we're watching, um, I'm watching so many documentaries at the moment. And as soon as you get to know the athletes and understand a little bit more about their story, you get the infighting and the ins and outs of the sport. I think that can really connect people that may have no idea about sailing to all of a sudden do the research and find that really interesting, access the data and get a much more um, kind of connection to the sport. Nina, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And all that hoopla of Sail GP will be in Australia later this month on Sydney Harbour between February 24 and 25.